Tom Hartman here with you uh, live from Portland, Oregon. I was starting to tell just before the break the story of uh, Sir Edmund Burke. Edmund Burke was arguably in the 1790s the, the most famous of the British conservative philosophers. And, and the Brits actually considered him almost a little bit of a liberal because he was in favor of the American Revolution. Thomas Paine, on his way to the French Revolution, uh, where he you know, famously got arrested and, and Jefferson enlisted James Monroe to bail him out. It was a whole long mess, right, that happened when Paine went, went uh, to France. But he stopped in London on the way and spent two weeks at Sir Edmund Burke's home and debated him vigorously. And he was so offended by Burke's position, uh, Burke's famous statement. I, I paraphrase it as uh, Burke saying, you know, the the profession of tallow maker and hairdresser, um, a, a man should be allowed to, to work as one, but, but, well, actually, let me read you uh, Payne's actual quote, because I always mangle it. And uh, he says, the occupation of a hairdresser or a working tallow candler, a candle maker, cannot be a matter of honor to any person to say nothing of a number of other more servile employments. So, you know, he's saying, okay, so you've got this lower class that works for the maximum wage. He says, but, but you know, he, he doesn't want to hurt those people. He says, such descriptions of men ought not to suffer oppression from the state. But, and here's the key to it, and this is to today's conservatives who are throwing hundreds of thousands of people off the voting rolls because they're poor, because they're black, because they're young, because they're old. But, Sir Edmund Burke wrote, the state suffers oppression if such as they, this is hairdressers and candle makers, if such as they, either individually or, connect, or collectively, are permitted to rule. In this you think you are combating prejudice, but you are at war with nature. So he believed this natural order of hierarchy and patriarchy and, and, and class and, and all this kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, Thomas Paine literally wrote an entire book in rebuttal to Burke. That two weeks he spent at Burke's house, so angered him, he wrote The Rights of Man as a rebuttal to Burke. And, and he starts out, he says, when I contemplate the natural dignity of man for the honor and happiness of its character, I become irritated at the attempt to govern mankind by force and fraud, as if we were all knaves and fools, and I can scarcely avoid disgust at those who are thus imposed on. And, and then he goes on to, you know, we have to review the governments which arise out of society in contradistinction to those which rose out of superstition and conquest. So that's, that's kind of the basis. I mean, the conservative thought was formed in, in the modern American conservative thought in large part by Sir Edmund Burke and, and, and by, the, by, the, uh, by the religious folks who believed that, that if, if you were looking for who God favored, your best way to figure that out was who did God make rich? And so, you know, John Calvin's theory that, you know, you want to know who God favors, look at who he's made rich. And therefore, you know, the whole Calvinistic notion that therefore the rich people should rule the country. This is where, this is where it's all come. This is, this is where we're at now. And it's now being made into policy with this tax, tax program. Anyhow, picking up your phone calls, Limwood in Gordonsville, Virginia. Hey, Limwood, what's up? Hey, Tom, what's going on? I love your show. Thank you. Um, it, it, the, the point that you made earlier in the broadcast about how the like you're talking about Thomas Paine and these different people that want the hierarchy rule is similar to that of the Bacon Rebellion that happened in the 1700s in this country, where the ruling class elite created the white and black terms to identify races as a way to divide the people against each other so there would never be another Bacon Rebellion. It's similar to what's happening today, yep. where working people today of you know, all nationalities, they have we become more accustomed to saying that we become more immune to inequality. We're like, okay, well, the rich make the country, you know, we should accept this as normal. But it's not normal when you've got people working two or three jobs at a time, people can't afford housing, people can't afford basic health care. And it's even to make it, they have to shack up with two or more people just to pay them rent or their mortgage. So I don't see how this is good for the country. Yeah. And you have the, that, that train track that went downhill in Washington. Well, we, we were talking about that in the Obama years, but it never progressed. Yeah. 
it never went anywhere. Well, actually, the, the Congress did pass a law requiring positive train controls by 2015 nationwide. It's just that Congress got lobbied by the train industry. The Supreme Court has said in the Buckley case in 1976 and, and others, uh, Citizens United most famously, has said that, you know, if a lobbying organization, if a corporation, if an industry, if a wealthy individual wants to own a politician or even an entire political party, that is protected by the First Amendment. And so, you know, the train industry, just like the airline industry, basically, you know, they own our politicians. But it's costing people's lives. I mean, yep. it, it seems to me that the lives of the American people it doesn't matter no more. It, yep. It's like the ends justify the means. Yeah, you know what? You know what the, is this writ large, Linwood? Is the NRA and guns? That too, and and the guns. That's nothing more than people trying to make money off violence. Yep. They perpetuate propaganda and get all these stoked up fears about people, and people are shooting each other for just. Yeah, 30,000 30, dead Americans a year, 10 times 9-11, every single year in the United States just from, from, from gun violence. It's amazing. Linwood, thank you for the call. Excellent points all. Chuck in St. Petersburg, Florida. Hey, Chuck, what's on your mind today? Plenty. <laughs> um, earlier in your show, you were talking about um, household income. And I remember when Reagan stole the White House in 1980 when they started the reverse Robin Hood plan, and unfortunately, we haven't come out of the Reagan Depression since. Yep. And the lie that was told for the last eight years that I saw from even both sides was the average household income was $50,000. Now, for the last six months, I've been watching these Republic clans say on, live on TV, and as of this morning, that it's 73000 Well, as you said, I'm in St. Petersburg, Florida, in Pinellas County. Somebody let the cat out of the bag. For what our average household income is, we have almost one million people to live here. It is less than $22,000 a year, which I think is still too high because everybody here is slave labor. Wow. And on a dead-end job. Yeah. And this, is, uh, and this is a desirable state in the mind of many conservatives and uh, many business people. You've got a compliant labor force that's scared to death, that's living hand-to-mouth, that can't There's afford no, the luxury. It's all slave labor. Yeah, and they can't oh, afford the luxury good. of threatening their employer with, with something like a union. I mean, it's just, it's... The, that, that is the state of labor today. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. And the tax, the, the tax scam is simply perpetuating that. That's extraordinary. I was, I was a worker in the yacht industry here for years, mm -hmm. almost 30 years. And do you know that all these people that had these, forget the million-dollar yachts. I'm talking the five to $200 million yachts. Do you know they don't pay one penny? They wrote, and I don't have time for me to do it, but they don't pay one penny of tax on any of it. Forget the tax on their jets. They don't pay nothing on that. They wrote a law. This is the law they wrote, and this is true. They must keep their yachts out of the country for 90 days a year. What they do in the summer, they do their med cruise 40, 45 days. In the winter, in the Caribbean, the rest of the time, wherever. The American flag is never raised unless they're in our waters. They, and America. on the back of 99% of them, it says Georgetown CI, Georgetown Cayman Islands, where all their stolen money is. Right. And in other words, if they keep their boat out of the country for 90 days, they pay no tax whatsoever. That's that remarkable. Billions I, I, you know, of dollars stolen from us every every year. Yeah. Uh, now, the the the, the uh, smaller version of that, I I was witness to. You know, when we uh, we've lived at two marinas. We we used to live in a boat in D.C. and we we lived at two different marinas. And when we lived at the first marina, the guy who had the boat, two boats down from us, was a lobbyist, and uh, was always fly, flying his Tea Party flag. And he used to have all all these parties on the boat, you know, with the, the bringing these, you know, young women and whatnot. In fact, Louise had to walk one home one night. She was so drunk. She was Louise was afraid she was going to fall into the water and die. And um, and he was writing off the entire expense of his boat because it was for entertainment, right? It's uh, he's a lobbyist, so that can be done too. I mean, there's uh, <laughs> it's, it's it's amazing all the ways that the tax code accommodates the wealthiest among us. Chuck, thanks for the call. Mike in Lomita, California, listening on KPFK out of Los Angeles. Hey, Mike, what's up? Hey, Tom. Under the head of uh, Don't Despair, Do Something, I want to recommend two websites. One is notonepenny.org, and the other is trumpisnotabovethelaw.org. Okay. The first one heard about just Saturday at uh, Representative Maxine Waters' town hall, and it's about opposing the tax bill. We're going to uh, Republican uh, congressmen's sites in potential swing districts and demonstrating this afternoon against the thing. And uh, the other 
uh, site is about in case uh, Trump fires Mueller, mm -hmm. who sabotaged the investigation. Right. There's going to be instant uh, demonstrations all across the country within a few hours. And I just recommend everyone to check out both of these sites, notonepenny.org and trumpisnotabovethelaw.org. Right. And both of those sites are mirroring real movements. There's also um, uh, needtoimpeach.com, which is Tom Steyer's site. Yep. Uh, you know where you can sign up and you can get uh, you know announcements and whatnot. I, I watch these ads by Tom Steyer, and and you know part of me thinks, okay, this guy wants to run for president in 2020 or 2024, and then the other and then another part of me says, yeah, and that'd be a fine thing. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like he's, it's pretty impressive. He's really he's really put himself out there, and and you know he's really doing something, which is which is you know something to say. But uh, yes, there's a lot of these movements, Mike, and thanks for the, thanks for the heads up on those two URLs. And, uh, you know, check it out. We're coming up on 45 minutes past the hour. It's the Tom Hartman program. We'll be back with more of your calls and the news of the day uh, after this. The, uh, again, just, just to recap, the Republicans want to shovel $5 trillion to the top 1%, take $3.5 trillion from the bottom 90%, and that's how it works.